this is sort of the syntax for the lambda calculus. This is uh, sort of the regular syntax for lambda calculus that we all know, uh, know and love, that's what we're supposed yeah. to say. So this is what we usually talk about, uh, and it's in a sense what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so a lambda calculus expression is basically either a variable or uh, a lambda expression uh, abstraction uh, or uh, an application. Yeah, so you have variables, functions, and you can apply those functions. And not much else, uh, but of course you can sort of encode other stuff like numbers and, and stuff like that. If you, if you want to do uh, programmy stuff, you can sort of yeah. encode it in, in these terms. So since we introduced the syntax, we also felt like we should mention that the talk is kind of mostly about syntax. Uh, and alternative syntaxes, I guess. And the talk is also kind of stupid, which I think it's fair to mention now, uh, <laughs> instead of <laughs> like discovering on. it halfway through the talk, <laughs> which is, it can be kind of a letdown. Uh, but yeah, in addition to syntax, uh, it does have some semantics. Uh, right, so this is... So this is sort of uh, some lambda calculus expression with some free and some bound variables, uh, some lambdas, some ap function applications. Um, right, so maybe you could sort of walk us through what's going on here. So the foo, apparently, I think that's going to, okay, that's taking the place of the a in the yeah, first so expression, right? We're kind of doing like reductions uh, or when we do these function applications. So we kind of, uh, here's some large lambda expression. Uh, it takes an argument foo. Uh, the parameter of the lambda is a, uh, so the a here is replaced by foo. Right. And then we kind of keep going. Until you can't really go any further because these now are, are just yeah. these free variables, right? Uh, so yeah, this slide is wide. Uh, yeah, I think I'm able to oh, scroll on everything. <laughs> there's even, uh, even more stuff out here, is that right? Yeah, there's some... There's some so stuff. More stuff. But uh, this is the same thing that we saw before, is that Yeah, correct? it's the same thing, but with like trees and stuff. So the, the, that's right. kind of the syntax tree. Right, so you have an expression. application and then, an, okay. So you see there's so the sort of nested applications and lambdas and stuff. And what we kind of do when we're evaluating an expression is we look for the first, so when it says app, it means there's a function application. Right. In the concrete syntax, that's basically like white space between uh, other expressions. Uh, when you say first, do you mean like furthest down to the left? Is that right? Or how does uh, it work? I'm not sure when I said first, but that might be it. Uh, so so anyway, what happens is we kind of look for the first function application we find where the sort of left-hand side, where the function that is being applied is a lambda. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So we find the, the app foo, the right. app lambda a, uh, and a bunch of more lambdas. And uh, that now reduces to this, right? And you can't scroll it up when I'm jumping because <laughs> I'm not <laughs> very agile. <laughs> so, you see, one of the applications disappears, yeah. and the lambda a disappears, and the a symbol uh, down there is replaced by the foo. Right, and then you keep going until you sort of... Yeah, so the same thing happens. Um, and we kind of stop here, and we still have a bunch of... We're left with like two function applications. Right, uh, but you can't really do anything with them, right? Because no, those are just free variables that we don't know much about. Yeah. So we kind of, yeah. There's nothing more we can do, so we're done. Right, yeah, okay, uh, so we just stop. Uh, so it's not necessarily immediately obvious like how you can do more sophisticated stuff with this. Uh, but right. Yeah. So, so what we usually do is to sort of explain how we can do like numbers and addition and things like that. We're going to spend like a few minutes on it today, right. uh, just so we have like some examples we can play with later on. Right, so all numbers or, or all sort of encodings of numbers have this pattern of lambda f, lambda x, and then yeah. some number of applications from zero to several. Yeah, so it's kind of f applied to x is one, f applied to f applied to f applied to x is three. Right. Uh, so, okay. as a shorthand, you can sort of. Uh, you can count the f's yeah, after exactly. the last period. You, you can count uh, these, basically. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, this those is are the numbers. More complicated. 
uh, and then we have like addition and multi multiplication, uh, and that's yeah, for the most part the most complicated expressions we're going to be dealing with today. Yeah, uh, and we're mostly going to stick to addition. Uh, so, right, so and, the, and the purpose of this plus or, or the addition thing is basically that you're going to feed it two of these lambda countless yeah, so numbers. It's a function that you can uh, sort of pass two numbers to. So one argument could be like this zero thing and one could be like this two thing here. And then ideally you would end up with that two thing again because yeah. zero plus two. So then the A will become the first number and the B will become the second number. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we, yeah, there are several ways to do this, but so we kind of build a new number by doing the lambda f lambda x thing. Right. And we say that we want to apply f a times to f applied b times to x. Right. So we can show a short example. Uh, I'm going to attempt to press the mouse button again. Uh, so we can define some shorthand for the numbers and and we're going to stick with addition for now. We can actually define it the wrong way to begin with. That's uh, probably a good idea. So, so here we should be able to expand this to the full lambda expression. Right, so this now was basically just fed in yeah. the, de the definitions, right? Um, so this is the number two and this is the number three, yeah. And we can evaluate it down to this number. And now we got back the number three, which is, it's off by two. Yeah, so you sort of, <laughs> that's just this number, right? Yeah. So you didn't add anything. So this expression we wrote here, uh, I'm doing the thing again. Yeah. Uh, this sort of reconstructs the sort of B argument, so the second number we passed in. Uh, right, yes. So yeah. the idea is that we can reconstruct one of the numbers and then we can... I'm, I'm going to attempt to refresh the page because I... No, I can... I've remapped a bunch of buttons that I'm using for the other stuff later, so I... Uh, let's see. This is getting far more confusing than I intended. Let's see, I can't use A because that's a uh, button I'm... Oh, you redefine these letters or...? So, let's say Z <laughs> and C, and then we have... I'm an, unable to use space. I'm going to refresh the page and oh, okay. uh, get it the way it looked there. before I broke it. So, we're back. Oops. <laughs> Close enough. So, so that's two and three. Um, sorry, it's the same. Uh, yeah, so the expression way we used last time, but we add sort of a additional f's to the number. Right. So when we do it now, we can reduce it all the way down. Right, and now you can just count one, two, three, four, five f's, so that should be the number five. Yeah. Which is... So, so that's the idea. Um, uh, <laughs> well, we're going to introduce a new syntax so I don't make as many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> But right, it's probably so this like is, this is your summary of, of the traditional syntax, right? Yeah. And so the key point about the traditional syntax is that it's traditional, so people have learned the traditional syntax. And so also, we were, I think, th sort of the basic idea for this talk is that it's it's not very human friendly, and that it's it's very hard. If I wanted to shout uh, a, a lambda expression, like a number to you, like the number five to you, that would be kind of awkward using the syntax with all these parentheses and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in particular, parentheses, I think we found. Yeah, parentheses uh, is a very hard And I get like Greek letters, and not everyone knows what they sound like. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the variable capture thing. Uh, yeah, so... That's like a technicality, but... Uh, 
So there's an additional detail is that sometimes you have to rename some variables when you're evaluating expressions. Right. So like, if you take this expression, you have this lambda x thing, and you pass in a y. And if you try to do it sort of naively, you end up yeah. replacing this x with a y. And then it looks like this y now sort of point store is bound by that variable instead of that yeah, variable. Yeah, because you have a name collision. Yeah. Uh, so you have to, uh, I'm trying to press the, so you have to do stuff like renaming one of the variables so yeah. it doesn't shadow for the other one uh, so that uh, you get something you like this instead. And the right one. this y over here clearly still points to this y on the yeah, outside yeah. instead of being sort of captured by the inner one. So you have to detect these things. Yeah. Uh, so that's the traditional syntax. And uh, then, yeah, then there's this. And then there's this, which is also traditional in the sense that it's pretty old. Yeah. Uh, and also used by people, probably. Yeah. So one way to get around stuff like messing around with variable names is to not really use names in that sense. Yeah. Uh, so it has a similar syntax, but it, you can see so the, the abstraction thing, it doesn't say like lambda and some parameter name and then dot, it just says lambda because it introduces yeah. some variable, but the variable doesn't have a name. Right, so yeah, so sort of an anonymous variable. Yeah. And the variable is a number instead of some string. Yeah, because you say that there are no variables, but still we have a variable. Yeah, we don't have like, uh, the traditional variable names. Yeah. Right. Uh, function application is the same way, but the variables are names and uh, are numbers, and there's sort of a number that, if it's the number one, then it's sort of points to the closest lambda you can find. If it's two, you have to right. sort of work outward in the expression until you find them. Do you have any nice trees to sort of illustrate this? <laughs> we have a drawing installed from Wikipedia. Uh, right. Okay. So now this. Go ahead and look at the trees instead, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, the but, but the idea is that, okay, so the first one, this now points to the closest one, but if it says two, then, then you sort of have to jump to the next yeah. one in the, in the sort of implicit tree here. Yeah, so the sort of lambda one things are, uh, yeah, those points to the numerous lambda, but yeah, the two. Right, so, so all the ones here are sort of local, so they don't point to any of the same lambdas. Yeah. You know? all point but to their sort of local closest lambda. Mm. And there's stuff like after the lambda, the orange lambda one, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to point to the same lambda as the number two over there, you'd have yeah. to use like the number three or something because that one is inside more lambdas than the other one. Right, because, yeah, you, have, you would sort of have to jump twice. Yeah. Uh, and this looks similar to the other syntax, but not entirely the same. But you can use the same trick, right? Because you can, instead of counting f's, you can count two's. Yeah. So if you pretend that it says like lambda f, lambda x, then a one would point to the x, and a two would point to the f. So. And that makes sense because one now points to this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and this, these are basically the things we've seen before, apart from yeah. perhaps being even harder to read. So the four is an A, and the two is an F, and the three is a B, and the two is an F, and the one is an X. But the point is just still the same thing, that you, you just want to identify the correct uh, yeah. variable, right? So when you look at like these trees, you see that like it's pretty much the same expression. Uh, the A over there becomes a four because it, you move yeah, you four want, lambdas up. You need up. to go four lambdas up, right, yes. Yeah. And for the f, it's two lambda up. Yep, it sort of maps nicely. Mm. So you get yeah. uh, evaluations like these and things like that. Uh, and it seems to work out the same way. One, two, three. Oh, this is multiplication. I was, yeah, I was so getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> there were four, so six two plus sets. three is five. You get right. five twos at the end. Yeah. Uh, it's e kind of easier to count because when we did it with uh, these ones, I'm going to. Oops. Absolutely can't. Uh, 
uh, you have to like make sure you don't point count the f that's in lambda f, but just the f's that are variable oh, references. Oh, that's right. Yes. So you don't uh, have, to, have to worry about that. But this way, you can just count the number, the two numbers, because there isn't a like two number when the variable is introduced. Yeah. So the yeah. introduction isn't a problem. No, so right. in some sense, it's like way easier. <laughs> And yeah, the whole variable capture thing just goes away, right? So that's it kind of goes away. Uh, so in some sense, it goes away. In another sense, you have kind of a similar problem in that the variables are changing names all the time anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah so or the numbers are changing, right? Yeah. So here, this number two is referring to this lambda, yeah. so similar to how this x is referring to that x. Uh, and this y is referring to that y, and that one is referring to that lambda. Uh, so you have just numbers, but when you pass that one into the lambda and reduce it, mm -hmm. it ends up changing the n to a different number anyway. Yeah, that's sort of confusing, I guess. So I'm not sure any of this makes it like less confusing, <laughs> but. Uh, we had this thing, and now we have this, and you see like this one refers to this lambda, but when we when we put it over here in order to still refer to this lambda here, we have to increase it for every lambda it goes past on the way down or something. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, excellent. Um. And you get m more complicated things like this one ends up in these two locations. Right, and so it, it ends up being different numbers because they are sort of different lambda distances from yeah, so the one. So whenever you pass a lambda, sort of, you need yeah. to increase the mm. number, right? So you get stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you basically like do some arithmetic instead of the variable ca capture mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and there's some s kind of pattern to it. Uh, three variables in the argument you have to deal with, and uh, right increase their number as you move down in the syntax tree uh, for before you putting them in places. Mm -hmm. uh, there's stuff like that. But there are fewer possible variable names. Right. There's still like infinitely many, but just like the natural number number of infinite. Yeah, so <laughs> smaller infinite. Okay. Not uh, all the but possible You still have the same parentheses problem. We saw that in, in both the plus and the multiplication. Yeah. So still, I can't really shout it very effect effectively at you. Yeah. And there's a point there called maths, because it looks more like maths. Is that, is that the it same has more, argument? More numbers the, in it. Also, with the Greek letters, it still looks like maths. Yeah. Uh, so for this reason. <laughs> <laughs> for this reason. <laughs> we have the third syntax. Yeah. Which, Which has most of the problems of all the other representations. Uh, and, and perhaps some of, some of its own. <laughs> and some of its own. Uh, so we decided that well, the basic idea was that we wanted to use the symbols beep and boop because they sound like computery. Yeah, so that's, that's a natural uh, sound that computers make. And then we decided we kind of ended up needing like two more symbols. So we used bop as well and then pling. Uh, right. And so the boop is kind of, okay, that's, that's a composite thing now. Yeah, so boop is sort of the start of a variable, right. and then we add more boops. And then you terminate it with a bap. Yeah. Is that right? So if it's yes. like one boop and then bap, then it's what uh, used to be the number one as a variable reference. So uh, one is boop bap, is that correct? Yeah, kind of. And yeah. two would be boop boop bap. Yeah, so sort of mm -hmm. it would be like, the variable named to, not the lambda expression for the number two, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and beep is lambda ex abstraction. So if we put in beep, we get a lambda. And we made function application more explicit. So we write pling, and then the first expression, and then the other expression, uh, instead of just having to uh, expressions next to each other and that the yeah. meaning function application. Uh, that means we can avoid all the parentheses stuff. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So uh, yeah this was basically uh, an early design decision that the identity function should be beep boop up. 
Yeah, we, we kind of discussed it if should we have, should we allow, should the identity function be beep bap or should it be beep boop bap? Yeah, so uh, we count sort of from one instead from, from zero. Yeah, should we like start with one boop or start with zero boops? Yeah. Uh, so those this are is the syntax trees. Yes. So lambda xx uh, corresponds to beep boop bap. Uh, that's the lambda, that's the variable references. Yeah, right so now. this is now the number one. Okay, yeah, so, so that's yeah. the number x. Yeah, yeah so, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, this would be the number one in the second representation. Yeah. Uh, so you get stuff like this? Yes, uh, uh, I think you can still see, clearly see the pattern, right? So you have the <laughs> pling, <laughs> the pling boop boop bap. I wouldn't use the word clearly. <laughs> But if you count the number of pling boop boop baps, you should still yeah ping boop ping boop boop bap it should be it sort five of of means them. sort of an f being applied within the lambdas, and you see that there are two beeps to begin with, same as there was two lambdas to begin with in the other ones. And there are no plings, so yeah, for the yeah, zero. Yeah, so the zero one uh, just returns the sort of x variable without any function application. Right, so there is no application. Yeah, yeah, yeah makes sense. And then. This is uh, still the same expression, but uh, yeah. without parentheses, so, so it's much easier like to this. say it out loud. <laughs> so we have an evaluator, so we can try this. Uh, right. Okay, uh, what do you want to try? Is this still the number two plus three or something else? We can try the number two plus three. So, so it's two function applications since the... So if you can now just write down plus first. <laughs> yeah, so when we're going to apply two arguments to plus, so we start with two function applications and then we do the plus function. Right, okay. Uh, and it's four lambdas if you remember. That's, yeah. And I don't remember from the sort of the second syntax. And then there's a couple of function applications and we're going to apply sort of, so we're going to apply a f times. Yes, that was, was missing something. from the, uh, from the broken. So a function. is like four boops. And the f is two boops, I think. Uh, and then we're going to reconstruct sort of the inner number, which is uh, it was that was b variable f x. It might. So be I think that's the plus function. Uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so and now you just need the number or the sort of the representation for the number two and. And number yeah. three. So number two. That should be beep beep please. Oh yeah, exactly. Like that? That, yes. Uh, That's the pattern we clearly saw in a few slides ago. Yes. Uh, and the similar So three. Did you have two plinks? I should not have two plinks. Two boops, not two plinks. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't accept any more input, so at least we made a full expression. Okay, uh, let's see what happens. So we can evaluate this, uh, and then we get this, and then we keep going. Now we can just count pling boop boop bap one, two, three, four, five. I think that's that's the yeah. number five. So, so clearly that's more. <laughs> <laughs> so we did make some stuff to make it like even more clearer. Uh, <laughs> So you can like draw the syntax trees instead. Uh, but you're doing something like this before because uh, you said before that uh, it didn't accept any more inputs, right? So there is something in your editor thing. Yeah, so it is building sort of some representation that knows what it is expecting. Yeah, so there's exactly. stuff like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to try to press the buttons with my mouse because that usually doesn't work out. But if I press the BAP button, no, nothing happens. Right. It needs to be sort of in the middle of a boop sequence in order to right, accept that. Right, because BAP is just a number uh, term. So you can have in incomplete expressions, but you sort of can't do other syntax errors. Yeah. Uh, and you can usually uh, finish an expression by like adding boop and BAP until it doesn't need anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, you don't necessarily know what it represents at that point, but... Mm. So we can also do like, uh, sort of, 
uh, translate it back to the lambda syntax in order to ah, okay, yeah. see what it looks like. Uh, I think I'm... You can sort of compare the syntaxes. One. So you can do the same expression. Um, it's a, right, so now people. it says that it's going to be two applications, and yeah, it sort of fills it out. Yeah. So you see, kind of see what's missing there. Uh, right. So by now it's... I'm not sure I'm going to say it's easy to work with, but it's... <laughs> Uh, yeah, easier in some sense. Yeah, there's, there's almost so like intelligence. You want the A like and you want the C, and then. You want the oh, this is the plus again, is it? Yeah, so that's the plus. Yeah. Um, you can see the same thing that you'd sort of see what's missing in the tree as well. I keep adding two plinks, which I shouldn't do. Yeah, you can always see how much it remains. The right, yes. And this is the... So that's the, that's the same expression. Same expression. So again, we should be able to reduce it down to... Uh, right, and now you can count these instead, which is... Yeah, you can nice. count the, the C's, C's there or yeah. up there or... Yeah. yeah. So... That's, uh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, and the final bit is that we want sort of actual sounds for these things, so yeah, so we wanted to uh, play noises. We've just had sort of textual representations of sounds until now, so mm. but of course sounds should be sounds. They should. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure they're nice sounds. There are sounds. So like oh, yep. the numbers tend to sound in a particular way, which is nice. Yeah, you can this, recognize this, the numbers because they're sort of here. regular. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, quite satisfactory. And then we can... Okay, so I made these slides on Firefox. Uh, this is a play button, but the <laughs> Unicode symbol doesn't show here. Yeah. And then it plays the expression for us. And then reduces it and plays the next expression. You might get tired of, <laughs> of it at some point. So that's the number five, yes. <laughs> Perfect. So <laughs> <laughs> we got rid of the parentheses. <laughs> we got rid of the parentheses. Uh, it's a the small set of words. Are very intuitive for the computer and for the com for the human as well. We've written that they're not very difficult words. We tried to make the sort of speech synthesis engine in the browser say them, but it uh, has it, enormous problems with saying boop. Yeah, it wasn't able to say boop oh. for some reason. It manages many similar words, but boop it just says B-O-O-P or, or something <laughs> instead. Yeah. But this is disappointing. But they, they seem to be not very difficult words to begin with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not on the research track, so we don't need to like explain why this is true. <laughs> uh, it solves human computer Cle interfaces clearly solves issues, the problems. issues by being intuitive. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Uh. Uh, Oh, and it's kind of nice that you sort of can't make syntax errors. We mentioned that earlier, but yeah. Uh, but like in regular, uh, <laughs> uh, in regular lambda calculus, you can sort of miss a parenthesis or something, or you can miss uh, a dot after something, some lambda bit. Yeah. Or you can put a dot somewhere it doesn't belong. You can uh, really do this here because you're. No, like, so you can have, I think I need to use the mouse again. So when, when I introduce a lambda, I introduce like the entire syntax for lambda, and then yeah. what's missing is the inner expression. Uh, so no, I so can have incomplete expressions like this, but I, I can't put like a bap now. Yeah, so it's just uh, going to... Also, if I'm doing a boop sequence, I can't use the other buttons. Uh, I can't add a beep or a pling when I'm sort of in the middle of 
right. writing the number, right, the, the variable yeah, reference no room for three, of three loops. Yeah. Uh, so that's nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what else could we do <laughs> with this? So, oh, oh, yeah. Einar usually brings like fish along to his talks. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, alternatively, uh, so, uh, as an alternative to sound, you can sort of try visual syntaxes as well. Uh, and I like to draw fish. Uh, so, Einar usually does talks when it writes code that draws this, yeah, this uh, is the Escher Escher square limit yeah. thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use backspace here. No. Probably not. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe just leave it. Uh, in theory, you could like replace this number with a higher number and get them some more detailed fish and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that's built on some picture combinator stuff. Yeah, that's Peter Henderson's old paper, basically, yeah. uh, on functional geometry, uh, which uh, makes drawing this quite easy. Yeah, which defines some operations you can do on pictures, yeah. like putting them beside each other or sort of throwing them up in the air and rotating them and yeah. stuff like that. So we kind of decided that uh, since we have these fish and we have these operations, we can also map the different symbols to different sort of fish operations. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to write the two, two plus three expression fully this time, but we get like fish. And what's nice now is that... Uh, so you see the fish changes color in order to match the uh, lambda parameter that it uh, is bound exactly, by. Exactly, yes. And we should be able to... You can clearly see the variable from I very from nearly did it without messing up this time. You can uh -huh. now look up something. Uh, and then we should be able to, yeah, that's the play button, and see the fish dance around and stuff. Right. <laughs> we can skip ahead some. Yeah, the completed number is actually quite beautiful. Now we have these five blue fish. Representing the number five, yeah. right? Yeah, sort of expand out from the green fish in the middle, which is sort of the reference to, to yeah, the number, yeah, the variable that we used to call x. So I want, if I want to communicate with you by showing you a picture, this would be quite, quite, quite <laughs> efficient handed. way of doing that. Mm. Uh, we also did something simpler with sort of this, some of the same picture combinator with just yeah. doing like rectangles and putting them beside each other and. Yeah and blow each other, so just a lambda sort of splits it into two that way. Yeah. Uh, a function application splits it the other way. Uh, and variable references should have yeah. matching colors still. Uh, so again, we can get expressions like... We have until like 1635, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we can stop a little before that in order to answer all the questions about, you know, everyone's wondering how to use this in their day-to-day -day jobs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you get, you can just play through the end. Uh, oh, yeah, so, okay, this is the no, no, thing, right? One, two, three, four, five. So, this is similar to the fish. Yeah, so five blue things. Yeah. Uh, and then a green one at the end. It's also kind of fun to make it sound different. So yeah, because you just had one sort of sound mapping, you could use arbitrary. Yeah. Okay. So we like doing stuff like this. You might have to turn down the volume a bit. <laughs> a bit longer to run, I realize. Uh, yeah, and at the end, we kind of wanted to have some expression that runs forever. Yes. Uh, so if you're familiar with 
sort of Dubai Combinator. Uh, it's useful for making things run forever. Yeah, and sort of part of the, a simpler part or a simpler version is the Omega uh, yes, Combinator. Yeah. Uh, So something like this will run forever. Yeah, because it's sort of self-reproducing, right? Yeah. So you have this expression that takes something and just puts it together like that. Yeah. So it will pass this in this entire thing. Then that happens to be the same mm. expression. So if you play this. No, like this. And then it plays the next expression, which looks the same as the we can, yeah, we can stop it by sort of removing some symbols from it. Well, that's not entirely quiet either. Not the prettiest sound in the world. Uh, I'm not sure if we probably need to end pretty soon in order to take questions. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So one thing that's kind of funny is that you can uh, make something that works out like the omega expression, but if you want more colors and stuff, you can sort of pack an omega expression into some larger expression. Uh, Does it sort of hide some junk there? Or? So if we <laughs> make something that takes two arguments and just returns the first one, then we can put put the, the omega thing there, and then you can just put whatever here in order to get some colors. This is now just sort of free writing junk, basically, that makes it look pretty. Is that yeah. right? Yes. So this should run forever. Uh, and then I like to mess more with the sounds. So the next time it spins, it should sound weirder. It already sounds weird, but... <laughs> um, and I think that's more or less it. That's probably the end. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if... If you turn it off, then there's room for questions. Uh, if we leave it running, we avoid questions, so I'm not sure what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, if there's a difficult question, we can turn it back on, so... <laughs> uh, we can stop it there, I guess. It stopped. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I haven't like looked into it if I can always recognize sort of what is a lambda and what is a function application and stuff like that. In this case, it's kind of clear, <laughs> but I'm not sure that's always the case. Yeah. You probably need some practice. Yeah, you need to stare at fishes for a while. Yeah. Um, so, any more questions? Uh, down there. Okay, behind me. So have you found any useful applications for this at work? <laughs> we have found function applications in this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I heard that. <laughs> but yeah, I think the long answer is no. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it gets invited to two conferences or so. <laughs> Will you do good on numbers next time? I not would have to do them, I guess. I never learned good numbers. They only seem they seem way more mathy. Uh. Mm. But they do have like uh, there is a different encoding of numbers in lambda calculus that is kind of fun. like there's this Scott encoding, I think. Uh, there's stuff like that you can do, but good numbers have uh, yeah, never understood myself at least, so maybe in 10 years, I don't know. <laughs> that was very entertaining, thank you. Um, how about a closing round of applause?